we have 45 minutes more to close the service. Amen. Now we are going straight. Don't forget, we have been talking about the topic of problem solving in marriage. And I told us on Sunday, we took the first part of it. We saw the nine areas that problems could come up from. Then we also saw uh, how to approach the problem as a believer. How do we approach problems in order to solve it as a believer? Our mama told us uh, five of them. Number one, she said, pray about the situation. That don't talk to your spouse over a situation you have not prayed about. If you have not prayed about it, don't talk about it. If you have not prayed over it, don't talk about it. Then she also talked about number two, be positive that there is solution. It means that don't ever get to a point in making up your mind to say, okay, there is no hope for me. Things is, is going to be ruined like that. To so think positive. Three, bring up the issue in the spirit of meekness. She said, do not be confrontational. You can tell the truth without making noise. You can tell the truth without having to fight anybody. Bring up the issue what, uh, in, the, with the, uh, in the spirit of meekness. Then she also talked about, number four, identify the cause sincerely. There are some people who just be making noise. They don't even know. They are not making points. You know, you can make noise and not make news. Now, it is not making noise that it is important. It is making news that is important. Don't make noise. Make news. Which means you must be able to identify or speak the sincere reason for misunderstanding. And she summarized by saying number five, if necessary, consult your pastor. Then she talked about method of solving problems in a Christian marriage. One, she said, be, uh, be ready to compromise. Now, which means that you must not be looking for victory. That, ah, I must win over my spouse. It's just like any man that decides to say, okay, I will win over my spouse. Now, if you win over your spouse, please, where do you go to celebrate your victory? So, you must be ready to come to the middle, compromise a bit to say, okay, for the sake of peace, I agree. But let us bring peace to our marriage. Then number two, that was where she stopped. Have a forgiving attitude. Now, don't be a kind of a person that will keep, uh, uh, you know, few, uh, your spouse's mistakes in your mind. Four, five years, three years, some of you are still holding on to something. Let go. There will be so many misunderstandings, but you must learn to let go. So let me summarize this so that we can take these seven prayer points that we have for today. Now we are still looking at methods of solving problem. Number three. Under number three, we have A to F. Let's start with Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. Hebrews 12 verse 14. 14. Let's all go there. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. Hallelujah. Are we there? Now it's a popular scripture. The Bible says, follow peace. Look at that. Follow peace with all men. You know, at times when I look at myself in the camera, I'll ask, am I fat? At times I look at myself, am I this slim? This one I see now is like I'm slim. Is it the camera that is causing me? Okay. Praise the Lord. Because I know I've, I've stopped fasting. Uh, I'm supposed to be fat by now. I we said, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Now, but the, we are looking at the A part. Follow peace with how many? All men. Now, which means that if there's anything you must pursue, Principally or not, it is peace. Now, peace is just, uh, you know, it's a small word of about um, five letters. Is it five or six letters? Uh, five letters, you know. Small word of five letters. But it is the main thing that determines progress anywhere. Now, look at the entire world is suffering of something now. What is that? Diesel. Why? Because there is war between Ukraine and Russia. Now, if not for this war, somebody like me at Liberty Road, okay, I do, will not know that we benefit 
by any means from Russia. Someone like me will not know. Someone like you will not know. Before the war started, a little of this was about 320. He said, now it's about seven something. Praise the Lord. Now, you see the prices of things are just changing. You buy this thing yesterday, you go back to it today, you say, ah, in Russia, you clean me. Ah, in Russia, you clean me. You can pure water. In Russia, so can you see that peace is very important. If there is no peace, there cannot be progress. Understand that clearly. If there is no peace, there cannot be progress. If there is no peace, there cannot be progress. I was telling somebody yesterday, or was it this morning, we were just talking about Nigeria crashing out of the World Cup thing, you know, uh, the World Cup plan. And somebody said, ah, so why is it, why are you so much affected like this? I said, I'm affected because me, I believe that that is the only thing left. We don't have water in Nigeria. We don't have light in Nigeria. We don't have road in Nigeria. We don't have security in Nigeria. The only thing that is left that we can be watching and be dancing and say, ah, go, go, go. They have taken it again from, from us. So when there is no peace, there is no progress. That's why the Bible is saying here, follow peace with all men. You must make sure you pursue peace in your marital uh, uh, home. Now let's look at this. How to uh, methods of solving problem number three. Know the things to avoid when solving problems. Now, we're going to look at those things. What are those things you should avoid? You know, when you are solving problems, there are some things that if you don't avoid them, the problem will escalate. And one can come to Yeke, okay, okay, Now, if you are going to make peace, you know, there are certain things you must avoid. In the Christian home, there are certain things you must avoid if you are going to solve the problem you are facing. Now, you are seated there right now. Don't say, ah, pastor, I, I, I don't think I need this, uh, this message because it's not for me. You will get married one day. Now, and when you get married, even when you have peace, you will still teach your children, some of your children, this message we are teaching you now. So, what are the things we are to avoid? A, let's put them in alphabetical order. A, do not shout when you are trying to make peace. Do not shout when you are trying to make peace. Oh, you want to bring peace in. You must understand that uh, uh, whatever you want to say, there should be a method of saying it. Shouting alone itself is a voice. Shouting alone is a voice. You want to make peace. You say, okay, my wife or my husband, let's talk over that issue. And you start talking. The next thing you start making, you start vibrating as if somebody is fighting with you. It won't work that way. There's what we call a peaceful voice. Now, that's the kind of voice that the Lord God used to talk to prophet Elijah when he was confused. The Bible says there was thunder, but God was not there. There was an earthquake. God was not there. There was a ferocious wind. God was not there. But the Bible says when there was a gentle, still voice. Gentle voice. Elisha. 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 Elisha didn't even bother to face. Are you sure that is God? But all of a sudden, he paid attention and it was God speaking. Anytime you want to make peace, one of the things you must avoid is to what? You must avoid shout. Do not shout. Number B. Let's look at B. Second alphabet. Do not share your problems with your relatives or friends. Listen, the moment you are married, I told us briefly uh, on Sunday when we were talking about one of the things that causes conflict. You must watch what you tell your relatives. There are some things if you open up to your brothers, your sisters, your father and mother right now, I'm telling you the fact, they will just tell you, where are you now? They will ask you, where are you now? If you say, I'm at home, they will tell you, we are coming with a taxi. Ah, but that me and Timmy, I me, sister, what are you coming to? We are coming to pack your things. You must leave that house now. There are so many things you must, you must learn how not to say. You know, when you get married, understand that you are to raise your own house, your own family. There was a case of one family like that. When they were to separate, it was a, uh, the, man, the, the man was the one causing trouble. He didn't tell anything to his mom. But when the lady now opened a little bit, the man did what? He went to report his wife to his mom. I mean to uh, the wife's family. You, my the wife has changed. My wife is now proud. My, she's, he said so many things. The woman didn't say anything. The family said, eh, Lakwaja, you have changed. You have this. You have that. She didn't say anything. So, the man now went back again and told them that, ah, I, came, I thought I came to report you, you know, uh, report my wife to you. You didn't do anything. She has not changed. 
So the family now invited their daughter. They wanted to scold her. She now opened up. The first thing she told them, he said, do you know that my husband is not responsible for the food we are eating? She opened up on how she goes to, she had to go to work to bring provision home. Ah, The family said, your husband didn't tell us this. He only came to tell us that you are, you are not responsible. Then number two, she said, ah, that one is even small. Do you know that I've slept at the entrance of the house, outside our house, several times? That once I come back from work, my husband will say, I don't trust you. I don't know where you went to. So he will decide to lock me outside. They look at the man. Is it true? You lock our daughter outside the house? Till what time? Two months at times, one o'clock, midnight. Uh, uh, the, uh, one o'clock is a.m. That is the neighbors that will now come to take her into their own house. That was what ended that marriage. The family insisted, that's the end. The man later begged and begged and begged. He got tired. He did everything. He even came to me. Pastor, please. They are not members of our church. Those days I was still less busy. Pastor, please come. I followed him. I did everything. You know what the lady said? He said, sir, if you want me to return to his house, it's like you are wishing that I should die. That was where I just put myself in the reverse gear and I left. So you must understand that there are certain things. Now, I told you that the, the, the point it should get to that you can talk to mature believers is when, when it gets to the point of your marriage becoming violent. Your spouse has started using abusive, strong abusive language. Your voice has started using, your, your spouse has started using threat language. For instance, your spouse is telling you, see, I promise you by myself, I will kill you one day. Now, when it begins to get to that point, talk out. Praise the Lord. Do what? Talk out. But your family is not the best place to go first. You know why you should not go there first? It may be something that is managed, that you can still manage and conquer without getting to them. But you know, if it gets to them before you now begin to manage it, ah, they don't forget things easily. Praise the Lord. So what is the B part? Do not share your problems with your relatives or friends. Marital problems, challenges should not be shared with friends and friends. Now, why we should add friends to it is that some friends will not tell you what they themselves are going through in their marriage. For instance, you are telling your friend, my dad, do you, my friend, do you understand? Don't you know that my husband, my husband, imagine, he wants to give us money for food. He gives us 5,000. 5,000 to cook soup. What can that buy? And your friend that does not even have 5,000 from his own, from my own husband, will begin to tell you, ah, that your husband is stingy. Do you know that my own husband gives me 50K? Be wise. I told us last week, in sharing your marital challenges, you share it with a matured believer that can help you to win. C, do not use sex as a weapon. Now, this is another mistake some uh, uh, couples also do. They use sex as a weapon. When they have misunderstanding, the man may decide to say, I will not go close to you. The wife may decide to say, I will not allow you here. I will torture you with this. Now, we've handled cases like that. I will torture you with this. Now, beloved, such times, things at times, if care is not taken, the devil can capitalize on it. The devil can capitalize on it. Look at D. Let's run through it. D. Do not refuse to eat prepared food. I've shared this one with you already. Then E. Never use the word divorce in your quarrels. Do, make sure. Avoid it. I will divorce you. I will divorce you. Don't use it. Now, if you have misunderstanding, that is a word you must not use. Now, some people can become violent because of it. Eh, you will divorce me. They can kill you overnight. Too. Now, no matter what is happening at first, you will still be having it in mind. There can be peace. Now, if you now get to the point where having, having done all that is needed to be done and nothing is changing, you should not even be the one to say, I will divorce you. Never use the word divorce whenever you are quarreling. And F, the last one, avoid count the counsel of the ungodly. Now, who are ungodly people? They are those that are not born again. They are different from us. The moment you become born again, see, you signed a covenant 
to live your life according to the written word of God. The moment you are born again, you are living your life according to the word. That's why when they, uh, the devil came to Jesus, the tempter in the wilderness, Jesus, Jesus, I know you are hungry. Come and turn this stone to bread. You know what Jesus said? He said, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded from the mouth of the Father. Look at this. It means that as man needs bread in order to live, man can also not live long without eating the word. The same thing the, uh, uh, physical food does to the physical body is what the word of God does to our spirit man. Don't follow the, the, uh, the counsel of the ungodly. Ungodly people can make sense, but it, might not be, it may not be true. I was listening to a program this afternoon when I was driving, listening to those people's program. There are two friends on a channel. So a woman now called in. You know what the woman said? He said they should rescue how she's about to commit suicide. They should rescue her before she will commit suicide. They now said, how? She said she's living in a container with her two children. Her husband have left her. They asked her, why did your husband leave you? He said the husband used to beat her every day. Every day is beating. Beat me from morning till night. So I had to run away from my life. They now asked her a question. They said, how many children do you have? He said, two children. Those two, two children, is it from the same husband? He said, no. That the father of the first one is even from the father of the second one. Ah. They now ask her, which one used to beat you? He said, the two of them. He said, when I was, I, the first one I got married to, I gave back to one child. It was this beating issue that made me to leave him. Then, I married the second one after 10 years of waiting. That one too began to beat me. Then I left. Now listen. When they said people should call in, I took my phone. I dialed the number. It didn't connect. While I was trying to dial and dial, one pastor just disgraced me. The pastor called in and they picked his phone. They asked him in Yoruba, Baba Wani Nulua, Kileri Sioroti, She, She, Obiri, Nkonton Yoni, Wadju Olo, Nike Kia, Wan Kwe Man, Noni, Abikini, Emon Kanti Pastor Enso, Oni Uri Shiri Shio Gunlowa, Oni, Osha Daruko Gunri Shio Menri, Okay, but Pastor, look you from your own uh, view. What is happening to the man? The woman is saying, <laughs> One uh, imam also called. The imam also said, Ah, bon sheri, okun dile. that is battle from home. But one woman called. She has been married for 40 years. You know what the woman said? The woman said, If this woman marry again, the third time, the third husband will beat her. I, I, they now say, well, mommy, but why did you say so? He said, because the thing that made the first one to beat her is what has made the second one to beat her. She should sit down and ask herself, what has she not been doing right? You know, and I felt ashamed for the pastor that called. In fact, the woman said, I don't know why people will, will uh, uh, tie everything that is happening to their life to spiritual forces. That spiritual forces are now so busy that they don't have time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, when I, I just, the moment she spoke, I just dropped my phone. I don't need to call in again. She has said what I wanted to say. So that's what we call ungodly counsel. Now, in, in the world, hear me, you can't use the senses of the world to run a Christian home. In a Christian home, we follow scriptures. Now, I was sharing with somebody yesterday. I said, one of the cogent reasons why Jesus himself said, this is gateway for divorce. Where Christians can talk about divorce is when you discover with proof that your spouse has extramarital affairs. Now, if you discover we prove that yes, ah, uh, yes, you can choose to forgive. If you choose to forgive, it's your choice. But if you now decide to say, ah, no, 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 with this proof I have, I'm going out of this thing. You are biblically right. Praise the Lord. Talk to me. Praise the Lord. So, what you must avoid in marriage 
in order to solve problems is ungodly counsel. You know, in a, uh, when, when ungodly people counsel us at times, someone that will even tell you, ah, if your husband comes to the right, you better come with the left. If you come with knife, come with cutlass. They did not put your own head to the, in the house of the wash, wash, washman. Oh, go here, funky. I like that for. Are you getting <clears throat> Excuse me. But we can't follow it. We are Christians. Say I'm a Christian. Except if you are not born again. If you are born again, hear me, the Bible is our standard. We cannot follow ungodly counsel. An ungodly person can tell you that, well, if your wife is not serious, go get a girlfriend. The moment you discover, she discovers you have a girlfriend, you will see that she will become jealous and she will want to be serious. That's ungodly counsel. In the body of Christ, we cannot have what we call baby mama. A born again Christian cannot have, you are married, you cannot have side cheek. Praise the Lord. So, avoid counsel of the ungodly if you want to solve problems in your marriage. Ungodly people are the ones that will tell you, ah, ah, you don't know, men, men, men. Okay, you know what? Begin to do some things secretly. Don't let your husband know this. Don't let your wife know this. You know, I know of men that will say, ah, pastor, sir, you don't understand my wife. If my wife discover I have so, so and so amount of money in my purse, on, she will spend that money. If, she, if that money does not end, she will not relax. She will keep putting pressure of need on me. So, pastor, I need to lie to her. You don't need to lie. Hello? What you need to do is for you to understand what we call concentrate, leave pressures. It's for you to understand what they call discipline and you standing on your ground. My dear, see, this money that we reserve, we reserve it for this purpose. This is what we want to do with it. Let's not look towards that direction. Now, if we do this and this with this money that we planned, it will benefit both of us. Am I communicating? Praise the Lord. May God give us understanding. In Jesus' name. So let's look at the prayer uh, segment. Let's take these eight prayer points over our families. The first one we take it from 2 Samuel chapter 11, 1 to 5. Now, what is in 2 Samuel chapter 11, 1 to 5? That was where David made the biggest mistake of his life. The Bible says when kings went for war, he decided to stay at home. And he was walking on the pinnacle of his palace. He saw a woman bathing. He fetched for the, the woman. And slept with her. The woman got pregnant. What happened? She eventually decided to kill the husband of the woman in order to cover his sin. We are going to pray. May the spirit of error, say after me, not succeed to take hold of the head of our family. Look up. Every wife, every person here, let's use this opportunity to pray for the head of the family. Now, when the head of the family goes into error, hear me, it will affect the entire family. So, you need to pray for the head here. Now, if you read through, you will see that for that single mistake of uh, error, not mistake, error of uh, uh, David cost him the life of several members of his family. Cost him the dignity of several members of his family because of one error. Now, that's why I always tell women, pray for your husband. If your husband misses it, it will affect you. If your husband should miss it in any way, woman affects here. That's why I be praying for him. And we said, I didn't hear you. Say after me, may the spirit of error not succeed to take hold of the head of our family in the name of Jesus. Now, listen. You will mention the head of your family. And if you are the man here, Pray for yourself as the head. I am the head of my, of my house. May the spirit of error not take hold of me. Can we be on our feet as we pray? Are we said? Let's be on our feet. Say after me, may the spirit of error not succeed to take hold of the head of our family. In the name of Jesus, shall we begin to pray? Let's begin to pray, Lord. I rebuke the spirit of error, O God. And I begin to pray that in the name of Jesus, it will not succeed to, to take hold. Of, of me, the head of my family in the name of Jesus. I am the head of my family, O God. May the spirit of error not have power over me in the name of Jesus. May the spirit of error not have effect in my life. May I not put my hand into the error, Lord, Lord, that will cause harm to my family. Let's begin to pray. Lord, I rebuke the devil of error in the name of Jesus. 
that the spirit of error will not take hold of me, O God. I will not commit blunder in the name of Jesus. Now extend it to every member of your family. Say, no member of my family will be possessed into error in Jesus' name. Begin to pray. Father, no member of my family will be possessed into error. Begin to pray. My children will not be possessed into error, O God, in the name of Jesus. My wife will not be possessed into error in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Rakadaba, satayangadaba. No, no, member, no member of my family will be possessed with the spirit of error, O God, in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Ragadaba, basoto yengada base, shagada baribos, regadaba. Begin to tell the Lord, no member of my family will be possessed with the spirit of error, O God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, help me, O God. Let's begin to pray. Rababa sendele, shagada baskanda yara, lengo yara. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed and amen. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 9 and verse 10 says, where, where, uh, Wherefore, hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with a sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Look at verse 10. Now therefore, the sword shall not depart from thy house, because thou hast despised me. God said the sword will not depart. You are going to pray like this. That's prayer point number two. Say after me, may your sword not turn against my family, O God, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray for yourself. That sword means judgment. Father, help us, O God. That your sword will not turn against my family. In the name of Jesus. Are you praying for yourself? Are you praying for yourself? Begin to tell the Lord. Father, Lord, I pray right now. May your sword not turn against uh, my family, Lord. In the name of Jesus. That sword that was turned against the family of David. Ah. Uh, made uh, uh, Amnon to die, made Absalom to die, made that baby that was produced, uh, that was born by Bathsheba to die. Begin to pray. Lord, your sword will not turn against my family, O God, in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Basata, Father, uphold my family. Father, strengthen my family, O God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and amen. Let us pray, Father, in my family. Say after me, in my family, we will not suffer loss of any kind. Shall we begin to pray? I will never done any kenny. Nini we delay me, Lord, call Jesus. Begin to pray. Ragada Baba Sene, Shangada Baske, Lagada Baba. Begin to pray. I will not suffer loss. I will not suffer loss. So you could pray. I will not suffer loss of any kind in the name of Jesus. Lord, my family will not experience loss of any kind, oh God. We will not lose any child. We will not lose our life. We will not lose any organ in the name. Begin to pray for yourself. No death in my family, Lord. 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 <clears throat> Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Take number four, you say, may the wicked not succeed to turn us against ourselves in my family. Shall we begin to pray in the name of Jesus? Father, we pray right now that may the wicked not succeed to turn us against ourselves. In my family, oh God, we shall not become enemies of each other. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to pray. Rakada Baba, begin to pray, 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 begin to pray. Rakada Baba 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 Sene, Shangada Baskene, Rangaya Rabaskandaira, begin to pray, begin to pray. Look at how Amnon turned against Tama. Look at how Absalom turned against Amnon. Begin to pray. In my family, we shall not turn against ourselves. Are you praying? Lord, I will need the Otarawa. Lord, who called you, Lord, I shall not for what. Nino, we delay me, Lord, I may not the Otarawa. In the name of Jesus, may we not become enemies of ourselves, Lord. Begin to pray. Ragada, Baba, 
Baso to yenge degre ragada basanda yada. We will not become enemies to each other, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed and amen. Look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. I love it so much. Ephesians 3, 14 and 15. Please, can we have it on screen? Ephesians 3, 14 and 15. Thank you. It says, if we can have the, please, if we can have the amplified version. Can we have the amplified? Okay. You will see something. The prayer point we want to take from there is that Lord, preserve the name of my family. Look at this. 14 says, for this reason, in the greatness of this plan by which you have you are built together in Christ. I bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which means when I saw his plan, I have to submit to acknowledge his greatness. For whom every family, here, here it is, in heaven and on earth is named, which means the Aphalabi's name was named by him. Listen, the families in heaven and on earth named that, that sorry, is named. That father, that father from whom all fatherhood took its title and derives his name. Every name was drawn from God. You are going to pray. You say my, uh, my, my, my family name. My family name is from you, O oh God. May it not be possible for the wicked to wipe out the name of my family. Wait. We, we read one article on Facebook. I'm not saying this to make you afraid. But I'm saying this to make you know how wicked the wicked is. Uh, a, a, an entire family was being poisoned. Father, mother, and the three children. They now buried them the same day. Five coffins. Do you know that that family name has been erased? Every plan of the devil to wipe out your family name shall fail. Say after me, say, my family name is from you, O God. May it not be possible for the, wicked, for the wicked to wipe out the name of my family, shall we begin to pray? Lord, may it not be possible. Let it not be possible, O God, for the wicked to wipe out the name of my family in the name of Jesus. Ringada, ba, 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 begin to pray. Let it not be possible, O God, for the wicked to wipe out the name of my family, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Are you praying? Lord, may it not be possible, O God, for the wicked to wipe out the name of my family. No matter how hard they try. May they not be able to wipe out my family name. Ring Gada Baba. Lord, their name, Afolabi Princewell, will not be wiped away. In the name of Jesus, the name Afolabi Princewell will not be wiped away, O oh God. Ragada Baba. Begin to pray. 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 Balingada Basanda. Shagada Basata Yara. Lingada Baba. My family will not be wiped away, oh God. In that name, every attempt of darkness to wipe out my family name shall continue to fail. Lord, establish my name. Establish my family name. The name Prince Willa Falabi, oh God. Let it be established. Mention your family name as you are praying. Establish my family name, oh God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed and amen. Now, there is no time. In Jonah chapter 1, 4 to 12, something happened. There's no time. I'll just read the story with you. You know, Jonah was running away to Tarsus when God said he should go to Nineveh. And the boat he boarded, they just collect, they, you know, they, they brought him in as a passenger. Passenger, They collected transport fare from him, you know, and he boarded the plane. They didn't know that his disobedience would put them in trouble. All the cargoes that they carried, they were going. The Bible says there was this storm. This was so, it was as if the boats were going to tear. They had to carry all the cargoes. They cast them into the sea. Then they said, ah, the thing they didn't stop. They consulted their gods and they now discovered that something is wrong with Jonah. Now, they discovered that it was Jonah by their gods. It's to show you that even demonic people too, they can see, but they don't have solution. Because he was to Jekwe, so they now asked Jonah, what did you do? Jonah now told them. But you know what I discovered from it? 
the prayer we are going to pray, hear me. You say, uh, yes, me, my, you say my family will not suffer the consequence of other people's mistake in the name of Jesus. Now, do you know that this thing happened to me? Was it not yesterday? I wanted to buy a particular fruit. So, I said, ah, this fruit I want to buy. And I will see it at Budijao. So, I left my car. I was looking for bike. I didn't find bike. I wanted to go with bike so I could be faster because of uh, our traffic issues. As I got to Bolaige Junction, directly opposite me, somebody has a tray full of that particular fruit. And something was saying to me, why not buy it from her? The particular fruit that I wanted to go and buy at Budijao. But I said, no, no. Uh, it will be plenty in Bodija. So one bike just stopped in front of me. So I took the bike. As we got to Bodija, we searched everywhere. We didn't see. I now told him, let's be going. As he wanted to be going, VI will just cut him. And he just collected the bike on uh, higher purchase. I helped him to beg. They said I should be going. They will get another bike for me. I shouldn't bother. This man cried and cried and cried and cried. But as I was going, something was saying, do you know that your disobedience has put him in trouble? Funny enough, I got back from the, where I was going, a bike dropped me in front of that woman's place. I now bought all the fruit I need there. But my conscience didn't allow me. That was why I had to collect the man's number. That if there's anything, let me know. So today, he now called me in the morning. He said, sir, I've taken all my documents to the office. And they say I must pay 25,000. I said 25,000. Ah, 25,000. But something was just in my heart. Your disobedience has put him in trouble. I was just led to call Evan. Evan, do you know anybody at so and so place? Eh, he says, sir, I don't know anybody there. But as a honorable, I will know what to do. So I sent Evan's number to the man. The man now called Evan. If I now call, tell him to give the phone to the VIO. The man now called me back 10 minutes after. He said, sir, I want to thank you. I said, what happened? He said he talked to them and they give me my machine without collecting one naira. <laughs> without collecting one naira. Now, but when I was now coming, you know what God now said to me? He said, read that book of Jonah. People suffer at times because of other people's disobedience. But my own family will not suffer that kind of suffer. See after me, my family will not suffer the consequence of other people's mistake in the name of Jesus. Shall we begin to pray? Begin to pray. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Father, my family will not suffer the consequence of other people's mistake in the name of Jesus. Let's close with this prayer. Begin to tell the Lord. May my family not suffer the consequence of other people's mistakes in the name of Jesus. Regada Baba Basataya. There are people who die. There are people who lose family members because of other people's mistake. Begin to pray for your own family. Father, help me, O oh God, that my family will not suffer, Lord, because of other people's error in the name of Jesus. In that particular boat that uh, uh, Jonah boarded, do you know that so many, so many business people will lose their, their properties that day? So many businesses will collapse. Pray for your family. May my own family not suffer the consequence of other people's mistakes. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed and amen. Father, we thank you again for today. Take all the glory, O God. You have given us the lessons and we have taken prayers. Father, we thank you because we know you have, you have answered us. Lord, we shall rejoice all our life in Jesus' name. We commit our families to your hands. Father, our put and strengthen us, O God. Our family will not tear apart in the name of Jesus. Perfect peace will reign in our homes. Take all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed and amen. Praise the Lord. Please.